At long last, Apple has updated the MacBook Pros, and there's a lot of highlights. Of course, the touch bar is the big one. It's multi-touch, places the function keys. It's gonna be app-specific. You've got the second-generation butterfly keys. You've got Touch ID built right in to the computers now as well. But those aren't things I wanna talk about. I figure you guys already know about those. But there are a lot of things beneath the surface about the new MacBook Pros that maybe you guys didn't know especially if you're considering picking one up or debating whether or not it's worth the price. So here are 10 things to know about the new MacBook Pro. Coming in at number 10, there's still no dedicated GPU in the 13-inch MacBook Pro. So if you wanted the power of the 15 in a smaller package, you are still out of luck. It's using the Intel Iris 550. And for number nine, let's say with that 13-inch MacBook Pro, dual core only. You can get it all the way up to a pretty beastly i7 clocked at 3.3 gigahertz before you get any turbo boosting in there, but it is still dual core. If you want quad core, look at the bigger brother 15 inch. And coming in at number eight, the 15 inch MacBook Pro comes with the Radeon Pro 455 with two gigs of RAM, but for an extra hundred bucks, you can upgrade that to a 460 with four gigs of RAM. Kind of makes me wonder why Apple didn't do that out of the box. That's a big update doubling the dedicated video RAM for the GPU. So probably recommend you do that. Coming in at number seven, this is a big one. Apple finally updated the chips in their MacBook Pros. They are running now the sixth gen Intel i series of chips Skylake. The seventh gen Kaby Lake is starting to come out right now. Apple opted for probably the more readily available Skylake chips, but they are the sixth gen, uh, not the newest seventh gen that's available in some computers. And coming at number six, way better displays. The resolution is the same, but everything else about that panel got better. It's now 67% brighter, 67% higher contrast ratio, and 25% more colors, which should mean things are just going to look better as your video editing, browsing websites, looking at pictures, whatever other dirty thing you do with your laptop. Coming in at number five, we now have some color options. Although I wish it was just black. Space gray is now available in addition to the classic silver. And just as a, as a bonus one, no more glowy Apple logo on the back. Number four, the 13 and 15 inch MacBook Pros have four USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports. They're the same standards if you use them for both, which means a few things. First, you can use any of those ports to power your computer, which is kind of cool. Uh, and also, if you want to use a standard or older generation USB-A, which is sort of normal USB, it's dongle time. Coming in at number three, it's got a headphone jack, which seems like a silly thing to have to have to announce, but still it's a headphone jack. There isn't like a lightning port in there, which probably would have been funny, but headphone jack is still here, so you can still plug your headphones in. No, no dongles needed there. Coming in at number two, Oddly, the MacBook Air still exists. Apple is still happy to sell it to you on their website, but also existing is a new 13-inch MacBook Pro, not the one we've been talking about with the OLED strip and all the other Touch ID stuff that's been crammed into it. There's a less spec version that has physical function keys like the last gen, but it's got the second generation butterfly switches built into it. But they're positioning that to replace the MacBook Air, but they're still selling the MacBook Air, which doesn't make much sense. So. There are two versions of the 13 inch, is what it boils down to. The one with the touch bar, without the touch bar is, is kind of the answer. And also less ports, it has, it has less ports. And number one, and this is a big one for a reason, the flash storage you can get up to 100 times faster than the last gen. That's gonna translate to just way faster computing and it's startling how big a difference faster flash storage makes. Makes your whole computer feel better. You're thinking, wow, the six gen chips are so much better. Flash storage and as fast storage you can get for read and write makes a giant difference in everything you do on your computer. So that is a nice upgrade for Apple. And obviously there's a lot of other things here and these certainly might not be the big flagship features, but I figured you guys knew about those. Did you know about these 10 things? And most importantly, are you gonna be getting a new MacBook Pro? Are you not interested? Are you maybe jumping to a Surface Book or maybe either one of the Razer Blades or Blade Stealth? I wanna know what you guys are doing. Uh, if you found anything else that maybe Apple didn't announce, you see in their product pages, or maybe you've gleaned from another site, let us know. Give the video a thumbs up. We always appreciate it. Until next time, I'm John Ranger from Techno Buffalo.